Hey everyone, welcome back to another homework video. Lisa here from Shady Tree Stitches and with me as the new always is, is lovely Laurie <laughs> and special guest Sasha today. So we're here to give you the update for everything that's happening in the challenge world as far as we know um, as of the week, the 26th of July. Um, big news, big, big, big news. And if you missed it, you missed it. So too bad. Daily 30 did a surprise opening up of their membership and they were accepting 40 new members and each current member was allowed to only invite one new person, not two like they told us previously. So uh, as far as I know, when I last saw, they were up to 38 out of the 40 and I'm quite sure by now they're on the 40 out of 40. But they did say they're just doing it in little blips and blops. So if you missed out this time, um, you need to find someone who's in the group to invite you. And I ended up with like a list of a handful of people from last time I mentioned it. And it was really hard for me to try and invite them all. So please don't let me know if you need inviting because my next invitees are already lined up ready. Um, but find someone else who's in the group if you want to join and get them lined up to invite you next time. All right, what are we doing this week, Laurie? Uh, we're starting out with Daily 30. Uh, it's Tokyo Week. Tokyo Week is running from July 23rd through August 6th. Um, the stitch counts this time around are 200 stitches for three tokens or 300 stitches for four tokens. And if you're not a counter, you can also do two hours for three tokens or three hours of stitching for four tokens. So the prompts start out, um, number one, stitch on your busiest whip and tell us why it is your busiest. Um, just reminding, because there are a lot of new Daily 30 uh, members, there's not a pre-approval. So you do your best to justify um, meeting the prompts. Okay, you're first, Sasha. Okay, well, I think I would do um, Fairy Tale Village as my busiest whip, because there is a lot going on here. There sure is a lot going on and that works very well because you want to work on it. Yep. Uh, me, I'm just looking for it before I make you, um, oh, the cat's woken up. Here it is. Before I share with you, I, I have a lot of busy whips, but I'm going to do this one because my stitch in time, there is an awful lot going on in any Amy Stewart bookshelf. So I'm going to work on this one, I think, for that. Yeah. Yeah. And I am also doing Amy Stewart. I am doing World Travel Bookshelf because it's my busiest hate. Yeah. She has so much detail in all her works. They're great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Getting to the next prompt here. Prompt number two, stitch on a whip that was either a birthday start or a new year start. I'm looking for a picture, but um, I just had a birthday a couple weeks ago and I started um, the Hogwarts crest. So that's what I'll stitch on. I'm not easily finding a picture to, to show. But. I have got few options for this probably the only one I could do that is in my I am still sticking at the moment in trialing my 21 in 21 in and I'm doing that I'm not sure if I ended up finishing my story last week in no new starts for next year we're offering three main challenges and one of them is going to be to do 22 in 22 so you just focus on 22 whips I'm not sure if I'm going to do that but I'm trialing it at the moment I'm doing 21 and 21 for the next couple of months to see what I think of that um, and to iron out any bugs and things that there may be. So I'm doing 21 whips at the moment as a focus point. So I would have to work on this one. If I can get it to share, which is my Once Upon a Fairy Tale. I know a whole bunch of us on Virtual Stitches started that on New Year's Day as a New Year's start. Um, whenever it came out, I think. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's what I do. It's so pretty. <laughs> for New Year's, I started Language of Flowers for the Alpha Mabet Challenge in Semi-Sane. 
So that is my new year start for 2021. Well, that ties in beautifully with your semi sane alpha event. Mm -hmm. Okay. We, we are currently on letter P, in case you want to know. <laughs> I'm very behind. <laughs> okay, prop number three stitch on a whip with flowers. <laughs> Almost all of my whips have flowers, I have noticed. <laughs> but it's pretty easy I'm prompt, really. It's, mm -hmm. it's one of my favorite things to stitch on, but I'm getting pretty close to finishing my pansy wreath, so I'd probably choose that one. Yes, you are getting going to be close to that one. Yeah. Yep. Well, I've already stitched this, um, this one, because, you know, the props came out a few days ago. But I was working for the 24 hours of cross stitch to get a finish, and I was actually stitching on this berries in summer, and you can see it's got little daisies or something in it so mm -hmm. I got my finish on berries and that was all good excellent nice. I am not picking language of flowers I'm picking the bee comes um, of course it has flowers but I haven't touched it in a couple of weeks so there we go okay next prompt number four or stitch on a whip that has a lot of something. And this is left up to your interpretation on how you explain it. I think this would give me a good chance to work on Fantasia because there are a lot of clumps of different brightly colored flowers throughout mm -hmm. the meadow there. Very nice. There are well, I'm actually going to do more stitches on my six stitch in time bookshelf because there's lots of books. Mm -hmm. I am doing um, as the leaves turn because there is a lot of pumpkins and I show this almost every week, but I will put it back up there. There's a lot of pumpkins in that barn. And in that is a lot of pumpkins. <laughs> yes. There's also a lot of autumn trees. That's true. Yep. Okay. Um, number five. Stitch on a whip that is your self-expression and tell us why. The prop explains, um, and I won't butcher the names, but the prompt explains kind of a Japanese, uh, there's an arts district and it was very important that the artists, you know, show their version of self-expression, so. Um, th that's tough, because I think they're going for something a little bit more like edgy, but um, I think I would go I don't know. Um, maybe I would do uh, my Hawaii map because that's like my happiest place. So that's where maybe I feel like I'm the most myself is in Hawaii. Okay. This one's quite hard because it's like, is it is it your artwork self-expression? Is it expressing your personality? Because if 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 if, I, if you were going to ask me to express my stitching personality, you would all tell me to stitch on a house. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I could, I have plenty of options of that. Um, but I'm actually wondering. I'm about to start after this this video, um, start doing my model stitch on my new Australian sampler. And I feel like that's a good self-expression of me because I designed it. Yeah. And it's not a secret one. Yay, so I can use it for things. Yeah. Nice. That sounds perfect. I struggled with this prompt just like you guys are. And I had to, like you guys, focus on what is it about me. And for me, it's just needlework. Um, so I'm going to choose grounding force to be my self-expression. Um, and I explained it in the prompt that, you know, I hang my cross stitch everywhere. It is my self-expression. It's all over my house. It's in my office at work. So 
it's also the the the, the saying on that stitch would fit in with yeah. your expression you are a very much a calm grounding force mm -hmm. so um you could you could add that sort of thing it could be something you're going to say for the more contemporary people out there they could do a snarky cross stitch and then that i think that would be easy to do but we're not mm -hmm. really snarky so it's a bit hard to uh, come up with those ones at yeah. least not in my stitching <laughs> no no Okay, and the final prompt is prompt number six. It is the daily 30. And basically what that is, is you stitch 30 minutes a day. You have a start and a stop or an ending picture for each day um, work. Um, you can go over the 30 minutes, but at least 30 minutes that day. And you earn five tokens for completing all five days. And you can do it on any piece you like, but you can't mm -hmm. double dip it. So you need to make sure that you can... Um, I used to pick a piece for the week that I'd focus on, do the 30 minutes a day, and then I'd see the week's worth of progress. But you can just add 30 minutes to any piece you like. Awesome. Well, that's the daily 30. So welcome to the 40 new members. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing is that next week you'll get to see the monthly video. We'll go through the monthly prompts. And the only other thing daily 30 people may think about working on in time for August is to prepare their zombie run. So um, the zombie run, do you want to give a bit of a rundown on that, Sasha, maybe? Well, I'm pretty new to it. So oh, we'll you're new to it. I, I forgot. Yeah. So this will be my new first. People. Yes, I'm one of the new people. So Okay, I well, then you might give a, new, a rundown. So. All right, Laurie, take it away. Give us a rundown on the zombie run in the <laughs> simplest terms. Okay, basically you pick four whips that you want to focus on. And in the zombie run, you can either be a human, which means that you're going to stitch 400 stitches per whip or per leg. Um, and then uh, if you're a zombie, you're going to rest a little bit more. So you're going to take a photo or do a start and stop every 200 stitches. Um, some of the benefits of being a human is you get good solid work on every one of your pieces. It's pretty even and you have to take less photos, which is kind of nice. Um, if you're a zombie though, you can just do 200 stitches on the other three and have a focus whip where you can do the majority of your work on a single piece. It's just you have to remember to stop and take a photo um, because if you do 400 stitches and you don't take a start stop photo, then that one leg is just 400 stitches oh. versus the 200 you could have earned. But it's really fun. You make a lot of progress. I've had a finish this year and that I attribute to the zombie run. Mm. And it's fun because it's cumulative all through the year. It is. And, and it's really the zombie run is the reason why we are thinking of the 22 in 22, because we've been enjoying the focus, just narrowing the whips down to a couple that you can see some good pro progress on. Um, and that's so we attribute the daily 32 to no new starts coming up with 22 and 22. Um, so we say thank you for that. I personally am a human because I like to do the 400 stitches. And what that means is I do 1600 stitches over the four, four pieces. And then I usually in a normal sized month, it does change. I have two other legs of 400 to do. Mm -hmm. um, and that gives me a bit, bit of flexibility. And then I knock it over. What about you, Laurie? I started out the first half of the year. So um until I got in through um, June, I was a human. And I, like you, liked less pictures, but giving pretty much equal work to all of the four whips. And then I finished a couple and then I switched and I said, you know, I really would like to focus. So I used, a, it's called an amulet, or just basically if you finish your goal for the previous month, you have the ability to switch up your whips or change from um, human to zombie or vice versa. And so that is what I did. So I am now a zombie. So I can focus more on as the leaves turn and I can do the majority of my stitches there um, versus the other ones, so. Yes. Have you picked your pieces yet, Sasha? I have not. I, I know what not. one of them is. I only have six whips. So it's mm. there's not a whole lot of narrowing down that needs to happen. <laughs> no, well, it's good. You, you're gonna make that easy. All right, yeah. well, thank you for that lovely Daily 30 update. Um, and hopefully that's helpful. Any Daily 30 people, we are happy to answer questions. Um, just pop them on the video, but we can't answer questions as in approving your projects. They don't do the approving and we have no 
authority over saying anything is right or wrong. All right, one group we do have authority over, well, I do, is um, No New Starts. And No New Starts is just changed over to the next month's worth of, um, oh, what do you call it? Zodiac, <laughs> the name jumped out. We've jumped to the Leo on the 23rd, so a couple of days ago. Um, and I don't think we talked about this last week, but I think we were talking about the, the other ones. So four prompts, just show progress if you want to fit your prompt into your project into the prompt and you can get some just some bonus entries or, or whatever's. So the first one is it's a fire sign. So you get to bring out your fire pieces. So what have you got for a fire piece, Laurie, that you could use for that? Oh, wow. I'll share my screen as I scroll and maybe you can help me out. Would that work? Yeah. Okay. So I'm looking and I'm not a big fire person. There you go. Right. Your, um, yeah. Your travel bookshelf had a fire in it. Yep, right there. Okay. There you go. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> You've even got a nice zoomed in. Well done. Sasha? Um, I think I would work on my Hawaii map because it's got the uh, volcanoes. That's fair enough. And for me, I'm very similar to Laurie. My fire piece is pretty much the Once Upon a Fairy Tale because it has a lot of naked flame candles. They didn't have electricity oh, yeah. back in the day of that. So that's generally my fire piece, give or take. The next thing is a lion. The animal is a lion. Have you guys got any lions? You know I do. I do not have any lions. Well, I don't oh, know. Oh, wait, I do. You do? I'm sorry. No, go ahead. On please. the uh, Hogwarts crest, Gryffindor. You do, see? Yes. We make you think outside the box. You do have the, the lion on the Gryffindor. Very yeah. nice. I have the Sphinx on <laughs> world travel. I don't know if that would work for a lion. It has the body of a lion. It's no new starts. Um, I think if you could say it was the um, Egyptian version of a lion, I can't say you'd get away with it because I'm not marking it, but it would be worth a try, definitely. Yeah. And oh, surprise, surprise. <laughs> what am I going to pull for a lion? <laughs> Where is he? There he is. I love this whip. It's so useful. Um, the next thing is the gemstone is the peridot. Now, I might have to Google peridot for you guys because I don't know if too many people know what a peridot looks like. So give me a second and I'll get it up. That's the peridot. So it's like a really light green, olivey sort of color gem. What you got for that? Um, well, for me, I think Herbularius. Oh, yeah. I think the whole thing very much reads in that color palette. Definitely. That is good. I have uh, the stream at Darhaven. A lot of the trees, especially in this area here, remind me of that color. All right, I'm going to make you dizzy. I haven't looked for this yet. And I remember, it's not all my whips. I have 21 that I'm choosing from. I think possibly the... Chinese garden mandala because you know the the grays in the in the in the bricks and some of those plants I think could be peridot green. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? Yeah. Yeah. And um, so. the last one is the gladioli. Do we need to see the gladioli too? And it has to be look like that specific flower? Well it's meant to be yes it's not just I have a flower. Um, so there's lots of options for gladioli. Hold on. 
just in case our viewers are like me and not as up on plants. So lots of bright colours and a very open leaf. What you got for that? I have that exactly on language of flowers. <laughs> there is gladiolus and I believe that's a representation of it. There you go. I think I would go with Fantasia and these super bright flowers near the bottom. Yeah. I think that's the closest I've got. I don't know if it would work or not, but that's what I've got. That would be safe. I'm just looking without you scrolling and going dizzy yet. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think I have anything for Gladioli. Jumping out at me, unless, unless there's something hiding in the uh, Once Upon a Fairy Tale or the Animal Kingdom, I would actually have to be a pass. I have another one that I haven't started, and I'm not sure I'd actually start one for this prompt, oh, but I've got this gardener's oh, yes. shed, and I think that like right in here, I think these are probably gladioli. They look like it, yes. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you've got to go with a really bright flower with an open leaf, preferably in a long like stem of them, but okay. Next up, we have got the supernatural stitches. So remember this one is open to new members and it's all about stitching to get yourself stash. Season five, episode one, Sympathy for the Devil. Number one, stitch on a project that features a mode of transportation or a bright light. So you could instantly probably double dip your candle light one if it's a bright candle, which ours were. A mode of transportation. Anything for that, Lori? I do. Oh, that's sorry, fine. Lori. Um, that's okay. I would do World Travel Bookshelf. There's planes and cars and all of that in there. So I'm actually right now on my fairy tale village, stitching on this little boat down here, this little that's rowboat. That's a mode of transportation. Plus, you put a horse drawn cart in there too. Yeah. Um, I would be doing my Once Upon a Fairy Tale because there's a boat down the bottom for that too. Plus there's my bright lights. Okay, stitch on a project that includes a balloon or other child's toy or has a movie reference. Well, I think I would do Fantasia because it's a movie reference. <laughs> you can do that. <laughs> I'm stumped on that one. I think I'd have to pass. You have to pass on that. I'm, I've got an outside the box one. What do you think if I was to do this one for the movie Australia? With Nicole Kidman in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I could I could relate it to that. Um, it doesn't have a balloon as much as you might like to think. This is a balloon carrying an emu. It's not it's a sheep on the emu's back. So, a sheep riding an emu. <laughs> pardon? It's a sheep riding an emu. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not even convinced it's an emu. Maybe it's meant to be a kiwi bird because it's in New Zealand, and there's lots yeah. of jokes about sheep and kiwis and things. So, anyway. I think I would do my Anzac. Um, the next one then would be, this is a spell out, we don't need to do it, but it's supernatural methadone. So S-U-P-E-R-N-A-T-L-M-H-D-O. Any designer, designer name, design company that starts with any of those. So I'm sure you can do something. All right, stitch on a project that represents justice or peace. Hmm. 
I would do my around the world, the girls holding hands piece. Yeah, so, oh, definitely. That's perfect. Yep. I think I would go with um, the Hawaii map just because it's a peaceful place to be. Well, <laughs> this one could be a bit um, contentious, but I'm thinking my nativity because mm peace on earth and goodwill to men when yeah. Jesus was born even though he was born in not necessarily peaceful times so I think I'd do that one mm -hmm. okay I've got to get back to the right screen to read and shrink it down again I keep playing around with all the screens uh, the next one is a stitch on a project <laughs> that represents communication via the internet mm -hmm or otherwise. So any form of communication. I could use my nativity because the North Star communicated where Jesus was born, but I don't like to double dip them. Very true. Are you ready, Lori? Or? No, I am not ready. Please go ahead. <laughs> I would do Fantasia because I think Mickey is definitely communicating with those broomsticks. I would do, I would do World Travel Bookshelf because the Eiffel Tower was first a radio tower, was it not? Yes, it was. Okay, there you go. All That's right. That's perfect. I can actually meet the prompt. I'm surprised. Joy to being a designer. It wasn't me by Plane Designs. When you're playing this game, they communicate through little internet terminals. So um, that's pretty cool. That is cool. Okay. Next one is visit a project that, that falls into the fancy lady category. Sasha doesn't have fancy ladies. I don't have any fancy ladies. Are there any fancy ladies though in your once upon a um, fairy tale village walking along the street? Maybe. I also have this one. I haven't oh, started it's... it, but she looks fancy. She's a fancy <laughs> Hawaiian lady. Yeah. You obviously really like Hawaii. I do. Mm -hmm. Laurie? Uh, I would do as the leaves turn. The lady is in a full dress. I think that's pretty fancy. She looks like she's wearing her Sunday best. Yes. Just mind the bonnet. <laughs> well, for me, my current fancy lady is actually my South American angel. Mm -hmm. and she's very fancy. I mean, who wears that every yeah. day? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, then stitch on a project that includes numbers or words or symbols in the design. I like it when I get these ones that are easy to double dip. Yeah, for me, that's my <laughs> Hawaii map. Lots of words. Mm -hmm. I am going to do Nevermore because I need, I want to work on it and <laughs> it has words. <laughs> well, that's a good reason to work on it. Well, I was thinking you would double dip into the same way as me, but obviously not mine would end up being my alphabet sampler because i need to get onto the letters i'm up to o and i've got to go o and p to catch up got it yeah all right next one stitch on a project you intend to sacrifice and give up as a gift to someone else <laughs> Well, my Hogwarts crest was a get a birthday gift from my son, but I suspect that when it's finished, I may 
give it back to him when it's finished. I think that might have been the plan all along, Mum. It's entirely possible. <laughs> but I don't mind. Yeah. Laura? Uh, be thankful. I did it once for myself, and then one of my very good friends um, liked it, and I know she likes white pumpkin, so I'm redoing another one for her. That's so kind. That's sweet. I have a few options um, for this one. My Among Us will most likely hang in my son's room. Mm -hmm. But I was just thinking when I was scrolling through just a minute ago to look for this prompt, is this one. This one originally, my numbers sampler by all our yesteryears, I was originally going to do it like a birth sampler for my son. And then that didn't end up happening. And he's way too old now at, you know, he's turning 14 next birthday to have a baby number sampler in his room. I mean, Among Us is much more his scene. But my mum and dad live near the beach. So I'm thinking maybe I might give them to them. Mm -hmm. Okay, then the next one. Stitch on a project that includes a sword or a military theme or has occasionally been a torture to work on. They're very diverse things. I'm just going to jump in now and say my military theme is the knights in Once Upon a Fairy Tale because we've had this one a few times. Mm -hmm. um, I could do world travel, but I've done that for multiple prompts. Does that work against me, Lisa? No, no, you can do it for whatever you want. It's just that in this one, there's no benefit in, in multi-dipping because you can mm -hmm. do however many hundreds you want on any piece. So. It, there's no benefit other than you saying I've ticked off every prompt. Got it. Well, there's a soldier, soldier in world travel bookshelf. The you what did you call him last week? With the big fluff. Oh, um, with the um, oh, he's a bee feeder. Bee feeder. Yeah, that's what. You, that was it. That's what I said. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was trying to think. Did I call the hat? It has a name, but I can't remember it. So I think I would do um, Herbularius because it's beautiful and it's so much fun, but all the specialty stitches, all the colors, it can be torture sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, number 10, we're nearly there. Stitch on a project with an angel or God in some form. So we've had this one a few times too. Now for me, I could double dip straight away my um, South American angel, but I don't like to double dip into angels. So while you two are looking, I could try, still haven't got there, it comes up in the discussion and I managed to not do it every time. My Spirit of Christmas Snow Angel. She's beautiful, um, but I'm up to doing the metallics and the beading and she's on perforated paper and I do not enjoy perforated paper. So I keep procrastinating and never seem to get her done. But I need to do it because then she'll be done. And I have a whole bunch of these patterns because they're gorgeous. But the next lot I'm definitely going to do on fabric. What do you got, Sasha? I don't have one. That's fine. I don't think I have anything that'll work. What about Laurie? I don't think so. I just quick Google to see if the Kraken monster is actually a god because it's the child of two titans, but no, it's not. It's a creature. Okay. <laughs> so I don't have anything. Well, that's fine. I mean, you, that's the good thing about her doing 12 props is you, there is no expectation that anyone would do all 12. But if mm -hmm. you really want to, you know, go for it. All right, next one is stitch on a project that indicates school or learning. Or is your ninth whip in your album? Now, Laurie, might be fun for us to find our ninth whip in our album just out of interest. Sasha's just to tell us she has six, so she's no help. <laughs> so do you have anything, Sasha, about learning while we look for our ninth whip in our album? About learning. Not that comes immediately to mind from my current whips. <laughs> So that's two in a row. 
Uh, Lisa, are you ranking by start date or size or? I was just going down the list. So if you look at your whip list, what's on number nine? My, my number nine is not on my 21 and 21, but my number 10 is. So that would actually be my stitching time. So I would have to go that one. What have you got for your ninth? I was just joking because I, you know, I just finished Holiday Quaker and that was my ninth whip. So I'm going down one more and that would be Coffee Quaker. There we go. Yeah. Um, but I probably have something for school or learning. In fact, I would do this one. The Scarlet House American Homestead Sewing Set because I'm doing this little house here and that could be a schoolhouse very easily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, plus you do sampler sets to learn how to sew. So I think I could get away with that one for that. Yeah. All right. And lucky last one for the Supernatural Stitches. Stitch on a project which includes brothers or which you're beginning to doubt your choice. Well, on Fairy Tale Village, there are these two guys fishing by the pond. And I think they could be brothers. Definitely mm -hmm. could be. Laurie, anything jump out to mind for you for brothers? No, well, maybe. Um, I'll show you here. Um, get cracking. There's people on the ship. Um, men, of course, and they could possibly be brothers. They're about to die, but <laughs> there's some men on the ship. <laughs> so, here. Well, I have a different one we haven't seen yet today that I could work on. Mm -hmm. And that is my Raspberry Homecoming because I'm pretty sure the boys at the front would be brothers and the girls would be sisters and it would all be part of the same family. So, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what I would do for that. So that's Supernatural Stitches. So enjoy, enjoy the stitching. Mm -hmm. All right. Now the other groups, there's lots happening around the traps. Semi-sane, Sasha, anything interesting happening there? Yes, there is, um, it's all Greek to me, which is the Olympic event. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, you know, kind of a pop-up to coincide with the Olympics. And each day there's a new event that you can stitch on. Have I got it right? I'm yep. just sort of getting warmed up to this you, one. So. You, um, you, you, it gets released each day, but you have the three weeks of the Olympics to finish each okay, day. Okay, so you can it. keep working on them for yep. the whole time. You'd have to when you look at today's event. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. start with number one, what do we got first? Okay, so number one is the first event is the Stadion. Um, and that was the first event to be held at the Olympic Games um, initially in 776 BC. It's a 200 yard sprint that only men were allowed to compete in and it was named after the building that it took place in. So the challenge is to do 200 stitches on your oldest whip. All right, well mine is an easy one. It is my number sampler which looks a lot more progressed than that now. My oldest whip's been getting a lot of work. In fact, I've nearly finished this blank square here now and I've finished the one above. So that one, easy to do 200 on that. What about you, Laurie? Um, Cozy Cove is my oldest whip. Um, take me a second to get that picture up, but it is an old 1980s, uh, maybe 90s uh, dimensions kit. Still hanging on there. Mm -hmm. Now, how's your oldest whip going, Sasha? I know you finished it earlier in the year. Um, I'm getting close. My uh, pansy wreath is my oldest whip. I have to switch back and forth in one sec. Um, yeah, so pansy wreath is my oldest. Getting close. <laughs> awesome. All right, and I'm having a little bit of connection trouble to load the 
number two the next yeah i'm sorry that's yeah. okay i know number two was to do with stitching on your whip that is the quickest to do um something to do with sprints i'm guessing i didn't memorize the whole prompt and i haven't got my I phone yet. have you got it i do um it's oh, i'm not even going to pronounce the name <laughs> Yes, it, the challenge for the event is to do 400 stitches on a whip that you stitch the fastest on. Okay, well, I mean, there's lots of whips I stitch really quite quickly on, but fitting in with what I've been doing this week, I have been trying to, I've been knocking over the thousand stitches for Crystal Academy extra credit on my stitching time. Now you look at that and you go, how is that your fastest stitch? But pay attention to this. I'm just doing the black. So mm -hmm. I actually can stitch it really quickly because I am just doing the black. For me, my fastest is pansy wreath because they're blocks of color. So once I get going on a flower, I can get it going pretty quick, pretty quickly. Awesome. Um, I recently started One Nation and I realized the pattern is so regular and it's only three colors that I can just fly on this sucker. So uh, <laughs> oh, I, I think that would be my new fastest whip. Yeah. Such a clever design, that one. All right. How you got today's one, Sasha, or will we go back to a Okay. I think I, I think it finally loaded. Okay. No. Oh, yes. Here it is. I've got it. Um, so it's the Dolicos, the long race event, which is, and the challenge is to do 4,800 stitches on your largest whip. You can't do that in a day. <laughs> 4,800 stitches. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, I'm going to put my stitching time in it because I have the goal of completing the black by the end of the year. And if I do a thousand stitches a week on it, then I will reach that goal. So if I do 4,800 in the next two weeks, I'll be ahead. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of stitches on that piece in one go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, um, Fairy Tale Village is definitely my largest whip and I'm working on it for extra credit for Crystal Academy. So it'll work really well to try to get that many stitches on it. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. nearly five extra credits. Yeah. Yeah. World Travel Bookshelf is mine. We've seen it several times today. So I that's that's a large goal there, 4,800. That's a lot. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Um, and anything else in semi scene happening this week? We've got we go to letter P and I think that's all. Um, no, nope, nothing else is happening. Oh, except if you wanted to participate in the Survivor, they had a sign up and you had to get in by yesterday. So we're a little bit late telling you that, sorry. But if you want to play UNO you know, next month, you need to get your four whips in by the end of the month for UNO. You know. And I still have not decided what they're going to be. I finished two this in the 24 hours. And they were two I was going to put on. So I... I will have to see. I guess maybe a stitch in time might be one of them just because I've got to try and get through 4,800 stitches on it now. So it's going to need every possible opportunity to be touched. Yeah. I don't know. Any ideas for you guys doing that, Sasha? Well, you know, as I said, I've got six whips. And so I'm going to have four of those for a zombie run. And what I'm trying to decide is whether I'm going to use the same four for, you know, or whether... I want to make sure I get the other two oh. in there so they all get in there. I reckon if I was in your situation, I would probably go the other two and yeah. definitely put your fairy tale village as one of them. Yeah. And then pick your either your favorite or your least favorite for the other one. What about you, Laurie? I picked my four already and I picked them based on. I think ease of stitching. If I have to stop and drop and stitch on those, how quick is it for me to whip that out and add that into my rotation for the week uh -huh. or, you know, for, for the day? But you know what I mean? I don't want to get behind. So I want 
I don't want my whip where it takes a long time to set up like my chatelaine and get everything situated. So um, nice. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, I think for mine, actually, you guys can help pick me. Would you, people, would you like to help pick me for me? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's see if I can give you some options. So I'll start at the top of my list. I'll make it big. And remember, it's only out of my 21 that you can pick from. Okay, so one would be, one option is Anzac. Um, another option would be Springhouse Trio, following your idea, Laurie, of um, quick and easy. I could also have my, oh, it doesn't want to show. It's Little, little House ABCs. Don't. Okay, I disappeared there. I don't know what happened. So yeah. Um, okay. Where did you guys see up to? <laughs> Am I still gone? Lost her again. Okay, so starting at the top, Anzac, quick and easy, one option. Springhouse Trio, because of Laurie's suggestion of something that's quick and easy and easy to put down, that's a good option. Little House Needleworks ABCs, also quick and easy, good option. Three, hope you're keeping track for me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to remember which ones are on my list. Ras Raspberry Homecoming needs some work on it. Mm -hmm. uh, I have so many, but they're not all on my option list at the moment. Little Macintosh Mill. Spooky Hollow, mm -hmm. fifth option. Which one's that? I can't tell which one it is. Oh, one. Spooky Hollow. Okay. And Among Us? Yes. That's another sixth option. Mm -hmm. There might be a few more. I'm, I'm going mm -hmm. through the possibilities because these are ones I could get finished. My Paddock Lane Designs August. It's close to finish. And I think that's all, oh, and then because you want to kill me, <laughs> let's chuck the good old spirit of snow angel in there to make me work on her. Mm -hmm. She involves beating and stuff. Yeah. So put your comment below people of which one you think I should work on or a couple and I'll do a quick tally. What do you reckon if you had to pick two, Laurie and Sasha each, what two would be your top two? Anzac and Among Us. Mm -hmm. Sasha? I would say Anzac and um, Raspberry Homecoming. I think you want to pick some that are pretty quick to do, mm. but still have enough to do that you're not going to get partway through the month and run out and then well, have to replace true. it. That's true. That's true. So maybe not the August because it's nearly done. Okay. So that's what's happening in Semi Sane. And Casey will be with us for the start of the month to tell us all the details about that. Yeah. Also, while I think of it, next week we have the lovely Hannah from Crystal coming to join us because Crystal Academy is going to be going on a field trip. Field we are trip. Just, yep. So we have information to talk about there. But for the moment, we are just finishing off our spell learning for this bit of the thing. Um, so there's nothing really to talk about there, but it's just plodding along and continuing. What about dragons, Dynasty of Dragons, Laurie? We started around on the 23rd. And so we're back um, hunting for dragon essences. And so uh, the stories are going, you know, we're stitching for spell ingredients and it's back to the normal routine, but the pub is still open. Um, you can still play the uh, arena games or you can use your pub chips and still buy some of the, um, I, I don't know what you call them, pub, pub food. There you go. 
And I think you can still stitch for the pub chips too, which is what we talked to you about last week. Um, I'm working my way through them, but I haven't got too many done. All right. What about pirates? Sasha, what's happening in Pirates Ahoy? We, are, we have been sailing the seas and we've now found a giant X mark. And I guess we're digging to find out what, what's what exactly X marks. Yes, mm -hmm. and we did just battle a bunch of um, wild, wild boars. boars. Mm. Well, speaking of wild boars reminds me of woolly mammoths, <laughs> which mm -hmm. segues straight to the survival of the stitchiest. Um, and I know Laurie and I are having a great time at the moment stitching for that. And they did a really cool thing. They had a competition for people to try and be your healer and a two assistants. So we have three of our 15 who are doing that. And they want a whole swathe of ingredients that can make healing potions and things. So they have been working their little backsides off all week to convert them. And our healers are doing an awesome job. Then they threw up a compulsory challenge for everyone other than the healers. And we all had to go and hunt these woolly mammoths. And there were five woolly mammoths with 4,000 each. So that's 20,000 stitches. And as far as I know, we had to stitch, not weapon it. So we are about to land our fifth woolly mammoth in our team. And I'm very proud of our team. It's been a great effort. The 24 hours of cross stitch weekend really helped with that. Um, I made it for 24 hours. What did you guys get up to? Uh, I had a pretty busy weekend. So I probably got 12 hours. Laurie? I think I was about 16 to 18. Okay, that's a good effort. Yeah, no, I was able to get on. I was on a Zoom that was for the 24 hour cross stitch and they were very happy that we were on there carrying over the afternoon time so that it actually ran for the entire 24 hours. And we had people from the UK, Australia, who tied it over when the Americans were asleep. So it was great. Lots and lots and lots of fun. So cool. Um, the other game that I play, these two don't, is Handcrafted Pioneer. Um, and in it, we are building up our settlement, but we also are having a little aside midwinter to build snowmen and things keep happening to our snowmen. So we lose some, we have to repair some and build some. So it's just heaps of stitching to be had. So lots and lots of fun. Have I forgotten anything? I don't think so. Nope, I think that covers it all people. So have a great week stitching. I'll be back with you twice next week for the weekly and the monthly. And thanks again for joining me, lovely guests. Have a great week, everyone. Mm -hmm.